Okay friends, today I'm going to do your bell ringer a little bit out of order. I want to start with this line pro plot problem because these ones are hard, I think. I'm just going to rewrite each of these fractions kind of in a way that you're probably more familiar with seeing them. Like here, this is how you would type them on a computer. 3 fraction bar 2, which represents 3 fraction bar 2 written like this, or 3 halves. So I'm just rewriting them because I think that will make it a little easier for you to understand which, what they all represent. Okay, so let's take a look at these and let's figure out which ones are either greater than one whole or less than one whole. So 3 halves is greater than one whole, and I know that because it's an improper fraction. And then of course 1 and a half is greater than one whole because it's a mixed number. So I know that actually 3 halves is equivalent to 1 and a half because 3 halves is the same as 2 halves plus 1 half. 2 halves is the same as 1 whole plus my 1 half. So I'm actually going to have 2 x's above my 1 and a half. So I can do those and get those out of the way. Okay. So one and a half, I'm gonna have two X's there. Oh, and look, this one is greater than one whole as well. This is four halves or two halves plus two halves, which is one whole plus one whole or two holes. Oh, look at that. So I'm gonna have to add, there we go. I just had to rearrange my, my intervals a little bit. Now remember, if you don't put these x's on your line plot, you're not doing it correctly. The x's represent those values occurring either once, if there's just one x, or those values occurring two times, if there's two x's. So we did two halves. Okay, that leaves us with one third that we have to deal with, and we're gonna have to come up with a common denominator for one third and for these fractions that I've already placed on here, okay? Because I can't have thirds and halves on the same line plot. So I'm gonna draw another line plot down here and I'm going to divide it into zero, one, and two. And then I'm actually going to divide the space in between zero and one into six equal pieces. So this will be one, six, two, six, three, six, or one half, four, six, five, six, six, six is one whole, seven, six, or one and one, six, one and two, six, one and three, six, one and four, six, one and five, six, and two. Okay, so one X goes above two. I did that. Two X's go above one and a half. Got that. And then one third is equivalent to two six. And I can prove it. Look, here's my, here's my one third. And if I cut that in half, which is cutting it into two equal pieces, now I have six equal pieces all together. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's my denominator. And I have one, two of them shaded in. So two out of six. One third has the same value as two out of six. So I can put one X here. All that to say, these line plots are not easy, you guys. So I really expect you to take your time on these, and I'm actually not going to go over the other problems in this video because I want you to focus on the line plot today. So I'm not going to go over this problem you can do on your own. This one you should be able to do on your own. This one you can do on your own. Rounding you can do on your own. I'm just going to do this one where we're adding and subtracting these fractions. Okay, so we're going to take 2 and 3 fourths and add 5 and 7 tenths to that. Now I need a common denominator for my fourths and my tenths. Fourths and tenths. Now one thing I can do is I can find my least common multiple 
for 4 and for 10, which means I have to skip count by 4s because that's finding the multiples of 4, and then skip count by 10s, and look, the smallest number that's on both of those lists is my least common multiple. So 20 is going to be my common denominator for 7 tenths and for 3 fourths. My whole numbers, I can leave, leave them alone. So now the question is, what can I multiply times 4 to get 20? Multiply 4 times 5 to get 20. Whatever I do to my denominator, I must also do to my numerator. So I'm going to multiply my numerator times 5 also, to be fair. Fractions are very obsessed with fairness. Everything has to be fair with fractions. Okay, now moving over to my tenths, I need to ask myself, what can I multiply times 10 to get 20? I'm going to multiply my 10 times 2, and since fractions are obsessed with fairness, I must also multiply my numerator times 2. And that gives me 14 out of 20. Last, I just need to add. I can add my whole numbers first. 2 plus 5 gives me 7. Now to add 15 twentieths and 14 twentieths, now that my denominators are the same, I can just add my numerators. 15 plus 14 gives me 19, and my denominator remains the same. So 7 and 19 twentieths is my answer. All of this work here is supporting work that you can upload to go with this problem.